Hello, and welcome to the Keystone Historic Preservation Grant Program's What You Need to Know webinar. I'm Karen Arnold, the Keystone Grant Manager. This recording is intended to cover the basic eligib eligibility requirements for the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission's Keystone Grant Program. It's part of a series of webinars that cover how to navigate the ESA application and how to build competitive applications in both the construction and project categories of the program. For quick access to the series, you can always find the specific links on the Keystone Grant Program web pages of the Commission. The Keystone Grant Program is actually funded through the Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation Fund, a set aside of the realty transfer tax. We share this revenue stream with several other state agencies and the PHMC uses its share for capital improvements at its own sites, such as that for the Cloister. In addition, we use this funding to provide public grants to our partners who are stewards of historic properties throughout the Commonwealth. I'm very pleased to have uh, be able to share what a large community impact this program has had in the stewardship of historic properties. The grant, grant program does have a number of eligibility requirements that I wanted to share with you. Nonprofit organizations and municipal governments who own historical and publicly accessible properties are eligible to apply. Our typical organizations that meet these requirements include colleges, conservancies, historic preservation organizations, historical societies and museums, religious institutions, and local governmental entities. We cannot support properties who have access to other sources of Keystone funding, such as groups that receive funding through PHMC Keystone allocations, like our associate groups at our sites, or place properties. Unfortunately, they're not eligible. We also limit libraries who receive funding through the Department of Education's Community Library Program. And please note, individuals and for-profit corporations are not eligible to apply. The enabling legislation sets forth a number of other requirements as well. Organizations must be in existence for at least five years. If you are a newer organization that does not meet that requirement, please reach out to me and we can talk about the opportunity of partnering with a fiscal sponsor who would actually be the applicant. Also, construction applications, properties must be accessible to the public, preferably at least 100 days per year. If it currently isn't, please articulate in your application how this project will improve access to the property, both the building and the grounds. Please note, if you are in a museum with limited public access, the grant review panel do consider that when making their recommendations for funding. We've all had a huge uh, impact of COVID-19 in our museum communities. So as the application requests visitation numbers, please use your pre-COVID information. But I'd like you to also include some information within the project narrative about how virtual access initiatives have improved during the 2020, during your site closures. The grant program is intended to direct funding to properties who need it most, and the enabling legislation focused funding to historic resources recognized in the National Register program. Properties can either be listed individually or is contributing to an existing historic district. Also, properties can be listed in or eligible for listing in the National Register. For those properties who are determined eligible for listing, we'd like to make sure that your uh, property has been evalu evaluated within the last five years. If not, we may ask for additional information to ensure that it still meets the National Register criteria. Our grant application does ask for its National Register number. Please contact me or one of our National Register staff to receive an official letter and the property's unique number. Remember, we are asking not for the National Park Service's NRIS number, but rather the PA SHPO resource number in the application. We can save you a, an immense amount of time searching through the National Park Service system. Also, I should note that the PA SHPO is transitioning away from the current CRGIS system that, as we launch a holistic PA share system. 
we will be abandoning this PA SHIBO key number for a new number. But for now, especially in this grant round, we will certainly be happy to accept the extant key number. If you want more information, I'll direct you to our Countdown to PA Share blog post for more information. The applications to the Keystone Grant Program uses the Commonwealth Electronic Single Application for Assistance. I should note that it works best in Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge. Both Safari and Firefox are, are somewhat incompatible to the system as a whole. We also recommend that you prepare the project narrative section in Microsoft Word or similar processing system and cut and paste into the application at a later time. The ESA system has a timeout feature, so if you're working on a single page longer than 20 minutes, it won't realize that you are and will time out and will have not saved any of your work. This ESA system does have several benefits despite this one small problem. It provides a streamlined process for applicants and a consistent platform with our other grant making agencies. The grant application is customized for the Keystone Grant Program, so you will see some differences, especially in the program addendum section of the application. It also accepts uploads of attachments and supporting documents, so nothing is mailed into the PA SHPO office. And finally, applicants have access to technical assistance throughout the application process from DCED's Customer Service Center. They're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.00 both by email and by phone. I'd like to talk a little bit about the funding priorities of the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission through the Keystone Grant Program. Obviously, we're attracted to projects that are very visible throughout the community and significance of the resource, both historically or architecturally, and how this project will further the public's understanding of its importance is also often considered. We like projects that are sensitive to the historic resource. So projects that are preservation and restoration act, um, focused tend to be better ranked in the review process. Projects that have a huge or a large public support and benefit are also well received. So I encourage you to reach out for letters of support to be able to articulate those that public support. And all of our keystone projects um, are, must implement this statewide historic preservation plan. We want to explain, we want our applicants to explain how their project furthered the goals and objectives, objectives set out in the plan. Um, and the grant review panel does take the time to evaluate the responses during their selection process. Please note that there are two different categories in the Keystone Grant Program. The first, and it's probably better, uh, more well known, is the construction category. These are the actual bricks and mortar grants. So if your project includes a plan to hire a con contractor who will make a physical change to a building or landscape, then the correct category to apply for is under the construction category. Remember, all projects have to be tied to a National Register eligible or listed property. And these, this category accepts a higher request between five and 100,000. Note that it requires a 50-50 cash match. So in essence, your project is 10,000 or at least $200,000 if you're asking for the top award. We are a state agency, so uh, your project must follow the Pennsylvania Prevailing Wage Act, which might impact the cost of your labor in your project. Please factor those higher costs as you prepare your budget and assemble estimates from your design professional or contractor. The second category is the planning project category. These support smaller pre-development projects or those with a historic preservation planning focus. Again, it must somehow support a National Register listed or eligible property. But it does take on many of the same aspects in the construction category as there are re reimbursable grants and require a cash match. It does use a different grant application in the system, so please make sure you're applying in the con correct category. Our planning project category account for about a third of the total number of applications that we receive. But we do encourage that many of our applicants 
to look at this category first prior to making a construction application. You can certainly use this program to prepare historic structures report, designs and specifications for an individual resource, as well as more com community focused projects such as design guidelines or, or preservation plans. Applications to the Keystone Grant Program in this fiscal year are due on Monday, March 1st at 11.59 p.m. Unfortunately, we cannot provide additional time from the grant deadline. The system automatically closes. Grantees are notified after the Commission has approved the panel recommendations at their June meeting, but projects may not start until there is an executed grant contract which we estimate to be October the 1st. You will not be able to be reimbursed for any expenses that occur prior to that date. However, your project does have a full 24 months for implementation. So the actual project end date is September of 2023. So where to go for additional information? You can check out the guidelines on the PHCMC website or our other YouTube videos for both this webinar and our other uh, others in the series. Feel free to reach out to me if you're not sure if your project is eligible or if you have any questions about the grant guidelines. I try to be very accessible this time of year. And don't forget to reach out to ZCED's wonderful customer service center if you're having issues with either your username or password or need technical questions about the application itself. We've also buried several links within the application itself for questions about the program fact sheet on how to answer certain questions in the applications. So good luck in your application. I look forward to reading them.